How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech and also to my look at the ASUS TUF X670E Plus Wi-Fi along with the crazy Ryzen 9 7950X, a 16 core 32 thread CPU that can boost over like really over five gigahertz on all cores, <laughs> but it will get into that. Now I already did our boxing video on this board, but now we can actually add some performance and attempt numbers to the video. But before all of that, let's quickly go over the board. Now pricing wise, the X670E is retail for around 370 dollars on amazon or a 7500 rand for here in south africa although it isn't currently available it's out of stock because it's just sold out too quickly but before we begin are you actually planning to upgrade to the new am5 platform with the ryzen 7000 cpus or are you sticking with your current setup or maybe planning to upgrade to something else let me know down in the comments below for the design it is mostly black with some orange accents here and there but far less than the previous tougher boards which i think a lot of people will actually like keeping it all black is just going to fit most setups a lot better now the new x670e platform does feature the new am5 lga 1718 socket amd moved away from the pga design which has depends on the cpu to LGA, which now has it on the board. So now if you accidentally bend some pins, you only need to get a new board, not a new CPU, which sometimes, not always, can be a bit cheaper. Well, especially in this case, where we have this crazy 7950X being almost twice the price of the X670E tough plus wi-fi so yeah you're gonna save some there now amd also mentioned that they would like not necessarily it's going to happen but they would like the new am5 platform to support for at least four generations like the am4 platform so possibly if you upgrade now to a, a very nice board you'll be able to upgrade to the 10 thousand series as well for the amd cpus but we'll see how it goes we'll definitely use some features like we did with am4 but you still have that option at least now as for the cpu the ryzen 9 7950x is currently amd's top of the range consumer cpu and again it features 16 cores and 32 threads it does have a base clock of only 4.5 gigahertz and can boost up to 5.7 gigahertz and that's actually achievable on all 16 cores uh, thanks to precision boost 2.0 and also precision boost overdrive now that's also if you have a good enough cooling which we'll get into it's, it's not easy to cool this beast now also it does use the same cooling amount as am4 which is a bigger plus so now you don't need to go buy an entirely new cooling system just one less thing to worry about when upgrading to a new system now as for the vrms it is a 14 plus two phase at 70 amp power stage which isn't a massive but is even enough for the 7950x here as we will see later cooling wise we'll also get into that and that also wasn't necessarily a problem now moving into a memory the x670e does support a maximum of 128 gigs on the four dual channel ddr5 dim slots with overclocking up to 6400 megahertz now unfortunately there will be a no ddr4 board options as amd decided to go all in with ddr5 this can however be a problem at a first for a budget gamers as the ddr5 memory is still quite expensive but like ddr4 it will go down later on in a price but it, it could take a while but now for our review kingston sent over their fury beast rgb ddr5 32 gig kit with speeds up to 5600 megahertz it looks great and performs as well so a big shout out to kingston for providing the ram and making this video also possible now if you want to see a more mother board a cpu and just all out of hardware videos subscribe to the channel because i do have a couple more videos to come as well as on my second channel linked below as well now dropping it down we have a three pisa express slots with the top slot being a pisa express gen 5 x16 while the bottom two are pisa express gen 4 for some additional add-on cards while running at a 4x speed also only the top slot does actually feature a suitor's armor design for better durability once you're installing one of these hefty 
have the RTX 40 series or 4090 uh, cards because they are massive. So just to help prevent your board from bending and or your PCI Express slot, that's definitely going to be needed. Now, unfortunately, there is a no Q release a button to easily remove your GPU. It's not the end of the world, but it would have been a nice either way. Because yeah, that's definitely one of my new favorite features, especially with me swapping out cars and all of that quite regularly. So yeah, I do quite enjoy it. Now as for storage, you do get a four M.2 slots with the top one being a PCI Express at Gen 5. Then the bottom two under the heat spreader is Gen 4, while the middle one without a heat spreader is Gen 3. All four does feature a SUSE's Q latch, which makes it extremely easy to install M.2s. And just like the Q latch, which unfortunately we don't have, but these ones we do, it does just make your life so much simpler, especially if you don't want to take out your entire system and install uh, M.2. It's really a time saver there. Now, as of yet, Gen 5 is not really available, but uh, seeing as Asus and AMD wants these boards to be future-proof, you do have have that option later on down the line. Also, once Gen 5 SSDs are actually going to be cheap because I don't think that's going to happen relatively soon. <laughs> They're not really even out yet. Now then also, you do get a four SATA 3 ports with two of them being at 90 degrees on the side. Now do note that the middle M.2 slot does share bandwidth with SATA 1 and 2, which will then disable those. Now for our IO, you do get a good amount with plenty of USBs, a 2.5 gigabit ethernet, and then also Wi-Fi 6. E. Same goes for the onboard I.O. with three USB 2.0 headers, which you don't really see a lot, your QLED indicators, your Thunderbolt or USB 4 header, and eight PWM fan headers and more. Now, just before we get into the fun stuff, if you do have an idea for a product you would like me to feature either in a video or a comparison or so on, then tag me and the brand in a tweet and we'll see if I can get that arranged for you. Now, of course, to no surprise, these 7950X is the best performing CPU that I've actually tested until a date, and it absolutely destroys all of the others. Unfortunately, I do not have all of the other high-end CPUs, like the 12900K, which I can overclock then and everything, but at least we can compare it to some of the other ones that I have, and again, it just absolutely destroys everything, even compared to the previous 5900X and also the 12700K, even overclocked. Now, gaming also did well, but the limiting factor was the RTX 4080 Super, again, because of the power draw being too much for my 700 50 or what unfortunately but hopefully later on we can revisit that and actually put in let's say later on a 1490 or something like that now then like i mentioned before uh cooling is a bit of a problem for the cpu so I did a pair it up with my Corsair H100i Elite LCD, which is a 240 millimeter AIO, and it's definitely a very good AIO, but it did have a really hard time keeping up with the CPU, hitting 95 degrees every time, although it never actually thermal throttled. Now previously, those type of temps would have been a problem, but it seems like it's okay for the 7950X or the 7000 chips. Now, of course, it's it's not necessarily ideal. You want to have it quite a bit lower than that. But again, it did a thermal throttle and it did boost way higher than its initial 4.5 gigahertz of base clock speed. Now, if you want to keep the temps lower than that, you will need to have a pretty good cooling setup. 360 millimeter push pull config or custom loop because it's going to take quite a bit to actually keep the CPU in a check or just have an ambient temperature of like zero. <laughs> but now of course, uh, these temps are what's due to precision boost uh, pumping up the clock speeds to between a 5.2 gigahertz to 5.6 gigahertz on all 16 cores in uh, games and also the production benchmarks, which is Honestly, just nuts. 5.6 gigahertz on all 16 cores in games. Now, VRM temps from HW Info also looked really good as well, peaking at only 60 degrees. But I will say that is if the readout from HW Info is correct. So just keep that in mind as well. Now, also, power draw was a bit of an issue here because I only had a 750 watt power supply, which just wasn't enough to run both the 7950X per with an RTX 3080. 
both of them just use way too much power. So unfortunately, I did need to move to my RTX 2080 uh, Super, which did use a bit less power and just enough for the 750 watts. Now, as for the 7950X, it did a peak at a 250 watts, but with an average draw of around 150 watts. Now, of course, that was only with precision boost overdrive. If you do some manual overclocking, all of that, it might even go higher than that. So keep that in mind. But you'll probably need something closer to a 1000 watt power supply if you are planning to go for the 7950X and even higher than. 3080, one of the new 4000 series uh, GPUs. So those also use a ton, a ton of power. <laughs> so now that we have all of that out of the way, even if you are planning to get the top of the range of 7950X, we can see that the uh, Tava X670E is completely uh, capable. You don't necessarily need to spend uh, twice as much on the board. You can rather use that money you save and possibly, again, spend it on a better CPU, or you can spend it on a better cooling setup because as we saw you will need a beef you want to actually keep this bad boy in a check plus also with the board having now pc express gen 5 for your graphics card and then also for your m.2s it's just future proofing for you where you don't need to buy a, a new board later on you can just use the same board for again four generations four plus years which is a really a good option now, I didn't talk about the uh, non-E boards in this uh, video, but later on, once we have a bit more of them available, they're very really limited in supply. We'll make more videos on those and see how those also perform. Again, the E is for more extreme overclocking and so on, whereas the non-E's is more for a uh, more enthusiast average kind of people still want most of the features. But of course, you're not gonna lose it that much out on the non-E, so we'll just see about the pricing later on. Because I don't think they currently have a tougher version available and would like to see a tough version but no, anyway that's pretty much it for a look at the asus tough x670e plus wi-fi along with the ryzen 9 7950x i think just a beast of a combo really you don't have to spend that much for your board you can get the top of the range cpu and you're just all set to go now if you do now i do hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please like share, subscribe and comment like always also a big shout out to asus for sending over the board for our video and then also kingston for our ram and asus also sent over the cpu so big shout out to them for that as well now if you guys want to get any of these products for yourself i will leave a link in your video description and i of course do hope to see you guys in our future videos because i do have a few coming quite soon but anyway thanks for watching guys and i'll take all of you next time Cheers, guys.